Hey gang, welcome back to Monument Hobbies. Today I'm gonna to be talking to you about a fantastic new product we've got called Noosh. Uh-huh, what is Noosh? Well, let me tell you. It is a non-toxic acrylic water-based product that is a good alternative to oil and enamel washing processes. So what that means is it's going to allow acrylics to take a lot longer to dry, but it's not just a drying retarder, it's our own special blend that allows it to be workable for longer, but not get tacky, and to dry to a nice consistent finish very quickly once you're done, that allows you to then paint over the top. Some of the other processes that we use for what we call subtractive weathering sometimes get a little bit messy as you mix them, and so Noosh is the, uh, the great equivalent for that that allows you to do it a lot simpler and get the same great effects. So before we get started, there's some things we're going to need. And the first thing, of course, is going to be a model to noosh. This particular model, we painted up on our live stream. If you'd like to see the process on getting to this point, you can check the links below in the description and that'll get you to the uh, recording and uh, show you all the details. The next thing you're gonna need, of course, is a bottle of Noosh. Uh, it comes in the 120ml bottles. Uh, it is meant as a medium that you would mix with all of the colors that you want. So you can use any of your acrylic paints to get any color you desire. So it makes it very, very flexible in that regard. Next, you're gonna need some colors to mix in with your Noosh. And like I said, you can pick any colors you like, any opaque or transparent colors, as long as they're acrylic, will mix in with the medium very nicely. So you can mix them together and then mix them with Noosh. It's pretty much a free form. You get to get creative and play to come up with the right color combinations to get the effect you're looking for. Next up is you're going to need a way to mix it. Uh, we like using these graduated cups that you can get off of just about any uh, Amazon or sales site. Uh, they're fairly inexpensive, but the nice thing is that they do have uh, the actual amounts listed there in both uh, drams and milliliters. So you can go through and it gives you just a good sight gauge really to know if you're mixing 50-50 that you're getting the same amount of liquid in after you've mixed it. So these are really nice, cheap, easy to use, and uh, you'll run through a lot of them as you do your mixing. After that, you're gonna need a way to subtract the paint. Yeah, like I said, Noosh is a subtractive weathering medium, so the idea is that you're going to find yourself putting it on the model and then taking it off with a lot of tools. And in order to do that, we use things like makeup sponges hard and soft Q-tips, and of course, your standard paint brushes. Now for a messy system like this, you don't even need to worry about your clean brushes. You can use your old ratty ones so long as they'll get detailed enough to be able to take the paint away from the areas you want and get some details done. But since we're taking the paint away, they don't have to be uh, as pointy and perfect as your normal paint brushes. All right, so the first thing is where do we start? And uh, what you're gonna wanna do is kinda get a feel for what you're looking for in the end game for the model. Like a lot of weathering techniques, it's really up to you as to how grimy and gritty do you want it and how what colors you wanna use and how far you wanna take it. Noosh will go all the way. It'll do very simple light filtering uh, or it'll do very, very heavy muddy texture. So it's up to you. Uh, for this particular guy, we've got him painted up in kind of a uh, 30K death guard scheme that I'm really looking to dirtify uh, the heck out of. And so I'm going to choose and have chosen the black brown uh, for my base filter. So we're going to use this at first and uh, mix it up with Noosh, do an all over filter, which means I'm going to take it, mix it up, apply it to the entire model, and then wipe it off. That's going to cause kind of a reverse dry brush situation, if you will. Dry brushing would leave paint only on the high spots and not the low. This subtractive method is going to take the paint off of the high spots and only leave it in the low. So that's where you get your weathering. It gets the feeling of dirt and grime built up in the recesses, panel lines, around uh, rivets and studs and all of those areas, but you're going to be able to be fairly specific with how you take it off. So that's going to be the more aggressive approach that we take with the black brown. Then after that, once we get that done and we've darkened up the whole model, we're going to go back with the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre to give those kind of rusty streaks to it. We'll be more specific with how we place it and it's going to show you how Noosh can get more detailed. It doesn't have to be just an all over sloppy procedure. If you just want to detail a shoulder pad or you just want to detail a helmet, you can get Noosh on just that area and by using the paintbrush, take it back off and make sure that the detailing of the weathering only stays where you want it. So we're going to do a couple of different ways of uh, approaching this and applying it. Um, and then I think you're going to be really surprised with the outcome off of a, a model that already looks good and is pretty close to tabletop done other than some details, but we're going to knock it all the way there and uh, leave it to where it's going to uh, be perfect for any tabletop. 
All right, so let's get to it. The first thing we're gonna need to do is take our noosh, our mixing cup, and our first color, which is black-brown, and show you how to get a really good combo of those that's gonna apply to the model, give you the dry time you want, uh, and be the perfect color. So very simple when we're only using one. Again, black-brown is one of our opaque protocol colors, just to show you, you don't have to use any special paints. Uh, you can use the paints that are on your rack right now. Uh, any brand of liquid acrylic should work. So I'm going to, because we're doing all over on this big dreadnought, I'm gonna go ahead and put four drops of paint in there to give us enough pigment to work with. We're gonna take our noosh. And in this case, I'm going to want to probably put about, mm, I'm gonna start with about three to one visually. Obviously the graded cup doesn't help us a lot when we're using so little bit of paint, but we're just gonna kind of do this and gauge it by eye and say, eh, it's pretty scientific and looks like about three times the amount of paint. So there we go. All right, so as you can see from our uh, super scientific mixing process, uh, the medium is very forgiving. You don't have to worry too much about how you mix it. Uh, yeah, I, I generally tell people about three or four to one on the paint and you'll be fine. So now we're going to take a wet, nasty brush and mix this up. Clean that off. Now we're gonna take a little bit of water and just give it a little spritz. This'll give it a little bit lower viscosity, flow a little bit better. Don't have to use a lot. And you don't have to use any. You can glop it on. Uh, sometimes, depending on the detailing on your model, the thicker the paint is going to be, the more it's going to get caught in the recesses. So just uh, as you use it, you'll learn you know, how much you can get it to flow and what the best case is, but you can mix uh, water into it as you like. The more water you add, uh, the faster the drying time is going to be, but we're still talking about uh, you know, upwards of 10 minutes of time that you get to work with this. Then we're gonna take the same messy brush. We're going to uh, get ourselves a generous amount of the noosh mix on there. And the nice thing is you can just kind of slop it on. Now, uh, noosh will give you a long enough work time that you can use it on the entire model at once. The larger the model gets, my personal preference is to pick an area, uh, do the noosh on that, uh, clean it up, and then move on. But you definitely can do the whole model at a time. I typically like to just move around. So we're gonna start with this upper body portion and the collective gasp in the crowd is going to take over here real quick as we slot this on. Get his head. You want to get it in all the nooks and crannies because remember what we're attempting to do is leave it in the nooks and crannies as a good weathering shader. So you want to make sure that's your first and foremost part. You're not as worried about the larger upper areas. So it's kind of a opposite from when we're painting as normal. And I can get a little bit more on there. Be generous with it. Very cathartic way to paint because it's very messy, very unlike what we normally do. All right, so I'm gonna rinse my brush real quick. And for this, because we're doing a large area, I'm gonna take one of our makeup sponges and not even getting it wet, I'm just gonna take it as a dry sponge and I'm gonna start coming back over here onto the bottle and look at that, I'm just wiping it right off. You'll find yourself wanting to kind of maneuver the sponge around as you go so you get a clean edge, All right? Just Start taking that paint off of there as you go. If you find that you've got an area that's too deep and you're not being able to get the sponge in there and clear it off the way you want, you can very easily grab one of your Q-tips or paint brushes and get all of the paint out of there as you need. You can see you get a lot of really cool interactions with it that give you some neat grimy streaking. And so what you'll find, like I said, I, I love being able to paint and kind of play with the paint as we move around. And Noosh is exactly that. You're going to find all sorts of really cool interactions with your base coat colors that you're going to want to say, ooh, what if I do something like this? So I can go and grab my clean brush, get some water on there, and I can come back and I can Maybe streak that down a little bit across the front like that. When I'm seeing those nice piles of paint built up in the recesses. The idea is that Noosh allows this paint to stay dry or wet for a lot longer than normal acrylics. So look at that. I can pull those streaks down and I'm getting amazing weathering without really trying. 
not that I'm not trying a little bit, but hopefully you're seeing that this is not, <laughs> not expending a, a whole lot of energy here to get really neat effects. And once I get a little bit of that more paint moved out of that inside, I can wipe that off. Pretty happy with the top there. I like this amount that's down underneath the missile launcher there. Got it into the crevices up around all of that. So that's looking good. I think that's a win. And now we just go back in and uh, do the same thing all over again, down lower on the model. So again, crappy brush, load with noosh, go to town. I uh, am not lying when I say this is probably one of the simplest things you will ever do in your hobby. And even though it's going to be one of the scariest things you probably ever do as you take a model that you're pretty proud of with base coating and a nice job on it, uh, hopefully we're showing you that you don't have to uh, be worried about using it. I'm uh, in any other forum ruining a model right this minute. If this were anything else acrylic, this would be a no-fly zone. Nothing that you do with uh, retarders or other additives like flow improvers will allow you to do what we're doing right here. Again, I'm just gonna section the model off because he is kind of a big boy. Got paint on there, make sure I've got good coverage around that leg. A little bit on the waist area up front here. I'm not gonna worry about the back right now. And then grab that same makeup sponge again, and away we go. Uh, one thing to note, don't press super hard. We are dealing with acrylic paints here, so you don't want to get in and scratch your model. So that's why I really like these makeup sponges. They're nice and soft, closed cell foam. So I can hit it very lightly. A lot of times I'll look at how the ridges go. You'll notice how the ridges go uh, back to front on this foot. So I'm going to wipe the noosh front to back so that I catch that paint in those ridges, right? That's going to help load up all that panel detailing. So you can kind of push it around as you need. Get in here, kind of wipe it. If I want directionality, I can wipe top to bottom, bottom to top, it's up to you. Again, I like that streakiness, so I'm gonna go top to bottom like that. You can see I'm not even putting pressure on the tip of the sponge because I want it to kind of grab that paint and streak it. pressure on over here, Get up in that belly area. Don't uh, worry too much if there are areas where you can't really get the sponge very well. Got a little bit over here, we can move that around. Here on the back. Because you can always come back with a damp brush and uh, fix anything that's a little thick or that was just hard to reach. So we're gonna do just that. Again, get my semi-clean brush now, but I'm really just using this brush with a little dampness on it. I don't need a lot of water, but a little bit of dampness is gonna help enliven the noosh again and get all that stuff out of the knee where the sponge couldn't reach. Now, one thing you wanna make sure of is if you're using a brush or a Q-tip, you wanna go over, dampen it up, wipe it on a paper towel real quick come back over just like if you were glazing or any other kind of painting process. Right, and then you can see how I'm able to get that to keep activating, moving around on the model. And I'm just gonna continue to do this. Rinse, repeat until I'm happy with the amount of grime I've got going on here. All that streaking that the sponge was doing, I'm able to Continue that, pile the paint up in areas I like, move it away from ones I don't. I want a little bit brighter up in this area. So just a little bit of wetness moves it around a lot more like that. But look at that neat grime I'm getting down low. Section the foot real quick. And I'm kind of taking my time. I don't have to be in a super rush. You know, again, it's you'll get a feel for it, um, but it's a pretty amazing deal to be able to work with acrylics like this and not have to go crazy going, oh my God, if I don't get that off right now, it's gonna die. We did this part first and look at how easy that's moving around.
and just take my brush, dampen it a little bit, and then just streak that paint. Now I'm using this to create the textures, but if you needed to remove paint off of an area entirely, same wet brush would do it. Even a damp Kleenex or paper towel would work great for this. Again, you always, your only concern is making sure that you're not uh, being too abrasive on the surface that you're gonna move the paint underneath. Um, now you might be wondering, how long did this model dry before we did this? And this has been, we did this on yesterday's stream. So this is about 24 hours, I would think, right? And uh, so we gave it 24 hours to dry before we came over and did this. I think anywhere, you know, 12 to a day or something like that is probably good for you. Right now we got a little bit that spilled over onto this, but we can get rid of that so that it doesn't water stain badly. Just kind of squib that brush around. It's going to sit in that panel line really nicely. But I can still get that off of there. We're going to come back and do this the right way. I just don't want those to be spots that show too badly. That works really well. Back looks good. Inner leg area a little bit more. And boom. And we have chest, leg, and crotchal region. You're seeing how this goes. Back to nasty brush. Back to noosh. Do it again. Sides of tanks, terrain, single miniatures, whole armies, anything is fair game. Once you get used to it, you'll find that uh, your timing will get better on working with it. Your fear will go away and diminish on putting it on your models. And you'll find all the neat things that you can do with all sorts of various colors. We've been asked, what colors would you use? Just browns and blacks and dirty weathering? But no, you can do brighter colors and get glow effects. If you're doing like flames, this would be a great way to get some really neat motion in uh, that kind of uh, fiery look. Magma, lava bases, I can imagine doing bright colors with. Get creative. Right, back to our sponge. Clean-ish brush, that's gonna be the name of this brush for the rest of the video. The clean-ish. <laughs> this is going to be our streaking brush. Oh, that was perfect. Grabbed a little bit that was in the panel line there and just vroom, ran it down. The nice thing is that's, uh, uh, not only was that a great sound effect, um, this is the way dirt and grime runs out of recesses on vehicles, tanks, things like that. I can only imagine 10 foot tall stompy uh, death boxes. You know, the dirt will catch to the point to where it uh, finally overloads in uh, an area. Wetness hits and moves it and carries it down the length, you know, according to gravity or motion, however it's going. And that's all you're doing. That's why it's important to think about, at least, how you're moving your brush. So you notice I'm generally going top to bottom because on this guy, gravity is going to pull all of my grime down to earth. And so that streak, that caught it perfectly right there. That would be the way that would drip down from his knee joint and all of that. So you're gonna get some really fun interactions like that uh, that'll just happen naturally as long as you're moving your brush in the right direction. Get over here, make sure we get that to not water stain on his butt. Back of the leg again. That inner. And there you go. You can see very quickly how we're turning this guy into a fantastic looking model with acrylics. No messy solvents, no mineral spirits, turpentines, anything like that. This is all done with just water. Anybody can do what I'm doing and turn any model into a fantastic looking piece with almost zero headache. Right, let's do this back area. This has got a lot of recesses in it, so this one's gonna be fun to see what we get because we've got all these nooks and crannies on the exhaust ports, right? So we wanna make sure we get paint down in there. Again, it may seem wasteful, but the end result is good. You know, definitely once you get hooked, you will use a lot of noosh. It's become one of our funnest things. It's, it's like every model, I think, gets nooshed. 
around here. And it's just fun to say, so I'm just gonna say new shit all through this video. Sorry, not sorry. starting to run up against the area where we did the front. So again, I don't have to worry about that. I can just kind of go over it. If I want to do that area again, I don't really want to, but I'm just going to run up to that line and just kind of smack the paint on there. Just make sure we got good coverage. That looks pretty good. I am rinsing the dirty brush between goes. Uh, and then back to our trusty makeup sponge. Uh, if you're doing larger things, you'll notice that the makeup sponge will get kind of overloaded. The paint is drying on the sponge a lot quicker. So if you find it getting a texture to it and you're afraid of, uh, you know, uh, ripping paint on the model because you're doing a side of a big tank or something like that, then uh, just grab another sponge. Right? Or go rinse this one out. Typically I have found that one sponge per model is good, or one, one sponge per model per color, I guess is the way to say that. It tends to work pretty good. You can keep rotating the sponge around without having to get it damp. Uh, the sponge damp though will do some fun stuff too, so you have a way that you can move more paint around if you get the sponge wet. So always try new stuff. This is one of those amazing ways of painting that lead you to fun discoveries all the time with how things look. Now the sponge is having a little bit harder time getting inside here. So again, I'm going to grab, uh, in this case, one of the softer Q-tips. Now we have soft and hard-tipped hobbyist Q-tips. The difference here being that this one won't shed as much, but it's not very soft. So you do need to be careful uh, with scratching. You don't want to buy, apply a lot of pressure here. Uh, or with the regular Q-tip, the thing you have to be careful with is it leaving a lot of thread on the model because it will shed more. I say thread, whatever Q-tip is made out of, cotton. But it'll let you get into the recesses a little bit better. I like the pointy ones. I wish the pointy ones were a little bit softer. They may make them. I don't know about them. We're gonna come back here and streak that area where we joined it to what we had already done on the front. And again, I've got some tight areas in here that I probably don't want to be pure brown. So again, we get the cleanish brush and we're going to get down in there with a little bit of dampness on it. And we can make that lighten up quite a bit real quick. So you can spend a lot of time on your model to dial in the weathering to get it just the way you want. You don't have to be really afraid of that. Again, I'm gonna come back and do some streaking with the cleanest brush. Now there, I did not rinse it after I did the back, so it added a little bit more material on there than I wanted, and I just wipe it off with a sponge. Now we've got a lot of this noosh in here, so I'm actually going to go in and just kind of dip my brush in it and then streak it out like this. So I'll dip the brush in there and then drag it down the face, clean the brush real quick, wipe it on the paper towel, and that gives me more of this to get that grimy look. And I love how it's dripping down from the rivet right there. It's gonna give us a really neat look. Same thing over here. I'm just gonna poke it in there and pull it out so I get a little bit of that color that streaks down. And then of course, get that motion going across the whole surface there. Always knowing that if I happen to like, uh, you know, I, I don't really like that darkness that kind of runs right through the middle there because that's where I have my highlight on the initial paint job, just come back and take it off. Again, editable painting for the win. I kind of am really happy with the rest of this. There's going to be chunky grime down in the joints, which is nice. We're pretty good on all of this. I like all that. Come back and do a little bit more streaking on stuff we've already done. Very happy up here. That was all neat. Good across the top. Kind of miss this area with the uh, missile launcher, so I'm going to go back in with the nasty brush and just real quick get that area with no fear of messing up the areas around it. And then just take our sponge and hit that real quick. Perfect. All right, so now. We've got the primary body, legs, done to a point that's looking really, really good. 
And now we'll focus on the arms. Now, when I'm going with the applicator brush, you can notice it's not very damp. It's really frizzing and brooming out. I don't really mind that. Uh, it makes sure that it makes it easy to get in all the dips, but you don't have to worry. You can dampen your brush as much as you want. You don't want to overload it with water, uh, but you can do quite a bit. I'm noticing that I got a little bit too much right there. Let's go in and remove some of that. There we go. Right, and now just all over again. And again, just grab our sponge and go to town. Keeping with that top to bottom streaking, and thinking about where our shadows are. You know, our initial paint job had darker colors in the shadows already. So sometimes I can leave more of the new sh uh, solution in those shadows and not worry about it. But in this case, where I have that neat deep blue shadow, I might want to take some of that brown away. So don't just leave the paint in the bottom area. Think about what you want to see from your model as you go. Because you have a long enough time to mess with it, you can kind of play around, see what looks good. Really digging that. Uh, the jade mid-tone that we put on there in that shadow is really coming through once that brown hits it, so that's nice. Now I'm gonna switch my brush stroke along the shoulder plate and go from the, what is the top of the shoulder to the bottom of the shoulder, because even though his arm's outstretched right now out front, you can imagine it hanging down low to his side, so a lot of the streaking might actually go downward uh, the way it is normally. Same thing here, we're gonna go top to bottom, and the way it would be at rest. Get that streaking done. And then same thing along here. Kind of run those streaks from the top of the elbow, those are nice. Grabbing a little bit of that grime from in the elbow there. Bring it down the arm. That's pretty good. I want to get the a sharper Q-tip because it's going to allow me to get down in the crevice of his elbow there and just kind of move that around a little bit so I don't cover up that metallic all the way. And that's looking pretty good on that one. And last but not least, this final arm, same dirty old sponge. Careful because you, uh, if you're like me, you start fat fingering the sponge and you wind up getting paint all over your fingers because the new wheels be active. So just be careful before you go put big thumbprints on your model. Stay clean, people. This is almost like cheating. This is just too good too fast. Again, just making sure that I'm cleaning the brush that I'm streaking with as I go, otherwise it will build up paint on it. Remember, we are removing the paint. It's gotta go someplace. It's going on the bristles of that brush, and you wanna make sure that it's not building up to a point where you're gonna be applying more of the uh, product on the model than you really want at any given time. And there you have it. Really, really fast application. Put it on, take it off, and look at that weathering. 
More than just a wash, we've got the streaking, the griminess, the detailing, the contrast, everything all at once, and we did it all with acrylics. No fuss, no mess. Give this about another 15 minutes and it's gonna be dry to the touch, at which point in time you can paint right over it. You don't have to worry about varnishing. Uh, as you'll see, we're going to add the oranges and the yellows uh, straight over the top of this so we can get a little bit more rust. I'm probably gonna go in with the oranges and the yellows across some of these rivets to give it some rusty streaking, but we wind up getting a nice dirty model that we can control that dirt, put it exactly where we want it, and get a much better result than just slopping a bunch of wash on it. So stick around, we're gonna do that next. So after giving the model uh, about 15, 30 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on how much you've uh, glopped on there with the noosh, uh, now we've got it to where it's dry. It's looking really, really good. We've got uh, a great amount of weathering. Uh, all of those streaks and the griminess that we wanted showed up really, really well. Uh, and so now we're going to move on to doing some other colors that are more of details. And in this case, I'm using the yellow ochre and the burnt sienna to give the effect of rusty bits on the armor. So we're not going to do an overall filter like we did originally we're going to start being more specific with the placement so that we can get those finer details in and I'll show you how Noosh allows us to do that too so what we're going to want to do again take our mixing cups and we're going to mix both of these this time around we're going to take some burnt sienna for the rust color we're not going to need a whole lot of this so I'm only going to use a couple drops three drops of that uh, again, we're just doing details, small detail areas and not the whole model. So don't feel like you have to waste a lot of paint or over mix a lot of noose. You can mix it in small amounts and still get all the benefits of the long work time. At the same time, we're gonna take some yellow ochre. Same thing, about three drops. And then the magic. to go in with, again, a very scientific approach of lots of noosh. We're going to take one of our big sloppy brushes, get it a little damp, and mix these up. Notice how Noosh doesn't alter the color at all, even though it looks like it has almost a white base to it, so it doesn't tint the color at all, doesn't change it at all. Put my eyes on, and for this particular way of doing things, we're going to have to think about the coloring and what we want to be the background color for the rust that we're going to be doing, and what we want to be the foreground color for the rust. Uh, and in this case, the yellow is actually going to be kind of what I'm calling a background color. It's going to be something that we want just a very subtle yellowing, kind of a, a dulling of, uh, imagine like the rustiness, but it's been uh, uh, washed away and things like that. So we're gonna use the yellow first, and then we're gonna go back after it with the burnt sienna, and the burnt sienna will be kind of just a streaky rust effect that we do. So we'll set the burnt sienna aside for a moment. Then we will grab, in this case, our uh, clean-ish brush that we were using before. And our little less clean-ish brush. We're still doing dirty effects, so we don't have to worry about using our best brush on this. Uh, it doesn't have to be very damp. Right? We're gonna grab a little bit of the yellow. Right, and I'm just going to, well, let's just get it into like this area right here, like so. And then get it damp. And we're going to take that and almost take all of it off of here. So I'm gonna get it spread out over a neat spot there first. And then I'm going to grab our makeup sponge, a clean one this time. And now that I've got it spread out and have dampened it a little bit, when I go back with the makeup sponge now, I'm gonna remove almost all of it. And that's just going to give a nice faint yellowing in that area rather than uh, like we did with the all over filter, a whole lot of color. Cause I'm just trying to get a background for that, uh, that rustiness to sit in. Let's get a little bit up here on the gorget around these rivets dampen the brush a little bit, and then again, just kind of spread it out over the whole area you want to get that feel for. Again, with the makeup sponge, and then just come in here, and that same kind of downward streaky motion that we've been doing. And you 
back and see how we get just a faint yellowing in that particular area. And I wanna make sure that I don't do the whole model uh, on purpose because we're not trying to get it to be yellow everywhere. This is really just trying to be, uh, you know, a, a specific place where maybe grunge and grime have built up on the top of these pocketed areas around rivets, things like that, wherever we've got uh, bends and corners on armor plates and such. You know, brush dampen a little bit. Again, just kind of spread it around. And then sponge. And that uneven approach helps give us that really grimy look. And we'll just do this all over the model. Rinse and repeat until you like it. On areas like this where you can see we got a little bit of yellow built up inside that panel line, you can simply get your brush damp again and just whip that around in there if you don't like it. I kind of don't want it to be quite that bright. And boom, we got rid of it without upsetting the rest of that nice yellow on the crotch area. And then back at it. When I've got a wide open panel like the inside of the uh, calf here, I wanna make sure I blur that area because I was only doing paint from the front. So it gave me a little bit of that kind of tide stain area in the back. Just take a damp brush and move the noose around there. So it just kind of blends it out around the rest. We'll get to the back side in a minute, but that way you don't wind up uh, going through and doing like the front side of a model, get done, turn it around and wind up with an area where it's already started to cure and you wind up with that line in the middle of an open spot. But you can see how we get a really nice blend there and we lose that really quickly. Blend out the bottom here. I don't really want that yellow to go all the way down. I want it to just kind of give me that staining in the highlights. So again, with the wet brush, just kind of wet that bottom area and then hit it with a sponge. And now we're back down to that darker shadow that we had without a lot of that yellow intruding over it. When working around a uh, cylindrical shape like the barrels of these guns, you'll notice that I have put more of the noosh material on there so they get a little bit longer working time so that I can go all the way around the barrel as opposed to trying to find a way to do half of a cylinder then blend it out, do the other half. Makes it a lot easier if you just kind of add more material than we've been doing on the other spots and get it all at once. Get it all the way around and not have to hassle with it. And just like that, our yellow is now done. 
set that to the side. And we have a very nice base with the yellow ochre in the background that sets up our rust streaking and kind of that staining of, of grit and grime. But notice how it hasn't overtaken the black brown overall filter that we did because of the translucence and the way that the noosh works. It allows you to put filters over filters and they just kind of blend together without actually moving them around. We haven't disturbed any of the streakiness of the black brown, so it hasn't reactivated. We haven't had to varnish anything. So it really shows the power of this as a way to continue to get creative on the model step by step as you see spots that you want to add new features to, whether it be uh, a new streak of grime or an oil stain or whatever you want to do. You can just layer it like normal paint, but use it in this method that goes very, very quickly. All right, now, without that really even having to set up for long, we're going to go in with the actual rust color, if you will, of the burnt sienna. And in a very similar manner, but using less paint even than last time, we're just going to take the same brush, put a little bit of the burnt sienna on there, tap it into the crevices around here, then clean our brush with some water real quick, and then just take that damp brush and streak that down now in that area very quickly, taking the same brush with the yellow. I'm not afraid to have these colors mix, and then I'm just gonna streak that down. It's gonna allow us to have that rusty, orangey color over the top of that yellow background, but they will blend a little bit. Go in and grab some of these individual rivets the same way, and then just take the brush and streak it down over that rivet. Perfect. The sponge only really needs to grab the tail end of that and just kind of blend it down into the rest of our paint. We'll do that on all of these because I like the way it looks. Again, just kind of flatten out the brush, put it over the rivet, pull it straight down. And then just smooth it out with the sponge. And instantaneously, you can see how that yellow then with the orange over the top of it gives us instantaneous rust. You get to control it, super simple. So we're just gonna do that over this entire model. little bit longer tail of rust here so I'm gonna go ahead and add some more noosh in kind of paint the tail on and then wipe it down because of that long working time we've got a lot of chances to add and subtract from it to get it just the way we want it That one doesn't even really need any cleanup. It's that easy. And again, you can get as carried away as you would like. I typically like to keep it semi-balanced. I don't even know what that means. When you start doing weathering effects, they look really good. And so you just want to keep going. I would always caution you to do less at first and then uh, adjust it as necessary, add more down the road if you need to. That's looking really good with most of the rust around the rivets and the, the gorget area. We've got a smooth surface here, so I can put a little bit on these small rivets around the side, like dink, maybe a little bit there, a little down there, but I probably wanna leave a lot of this area without too much detailing, but that's a personal preference. New shall do whatever you tell it to do. So I'm really just putting a dot of paint on there and then pulling down with a brush, not really fussing with it much. If I see like it's a little block at the end, I can take the sponge and just kind of do that. Bingo, easy. Like I said before with the yellow, I'm sticking mainly to areas where I have a hard edge or a rivet somewhere where rust would build up. I'm not as concerned with big rusty panels being you know, rusty all over. I'm just looking for the areas where it's the, gonna cling to a 
detail on the model. You'll notice through a bunch of this, or hopefully you will, I put my fingers all over this model and you'll notice nothing is coming off. Even though Noosh gives us a long working time, it's still an acrylic paint. So it's still gonna set up pretty quick. We can continue to reactivate it for longer than normal with a little bit of water on the brush as you've seen me do, but it won't uh, stay tacky for very long after you've got it smoothed out, especially on these colors like the yellow and the orange that we're doing because we're using so little of them. And that's one of our favorite parts about this. You can uh, continue to paint, you don't have to stop. You don't have to wait for anything. You can just kind of keep hitting areas, get them dialed in the way you want without much of a worry on what the product is gonna do if you happen to touch it again. And if you do happen to move it around in a way you don't like, the worst case scenario is that you're gonna take it all off and you can just put some more on. So it's very, very forgiving for a hobbyist. You don't have to have been painting for tons of years to get a lot of really, really good traction out of this. Up top here, I'm leaving more dampness on the brush so that as I apply the noosh, it's almost like a glaze because there's so much detailing up and down and panels and rivets and things right in this area where the missile launcher is that it's gonna be hard to wipe the paint away the way I might want it to. And so if I go and dilute it by thinning it on the brush, then it kind of almost does the instant weathering effect without having to ever go back and touch it with the sponge or anything else. So you can constantly be changing the dilution of the noosh that you've mixed. If you find something that looks really good just by applying it with the brush and you don't have to do that second step of removing it, perfect. On these we'll go back to hitting it with the sponge so that the rust gets down inside of those exhaust port holes and all that good stuff. And 
and boom, amazing weathered model using Noosh in a very short period of time for some very, very good detail and a really simple process that anybody can do. We'll just set that guy down, let him dry for about an hour, and we'll be ready to paint over him if we want to go back and do other edge detailing, obviously painting eye lenses, uh, soot effects, anything else that you want to do. We can either go back over it with more noosh, uh, mixed with maybe coal black to do the soot on the exhaust pipes, a whole world of possibilities, but this will show you that very quickly we can get to a fantastic look that ups your models a tremendous amount without all the nastiness of solvents uh, and other bad products. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Look us up on the internet at monumenthobbies.com and try some news for yourself. We'll be back with more tutorials. Thanks for joining me.